Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. What's up, guys? BD Wiz. Old school stereo.com. Today we're going to check out ADS, also known as Analog and Digital Systems. The first, still the best, according to this ad. Yeah, they were one of the first to make a component amplifier for the car audio market. Here's their Powerplate 100 from the late 70s and an audio magazine Car Stereo Buyer's Guide here in 1979. You can see the ADS Powerplate 100 at the top here, $300, 50 watts by two. It, Linear Power, Audio Mobile, and a few other brands such as Fosgate were some of the only component amplifiers at the time. And yes, they marketed these toward the higher end, Corvette, Mark 7, LSC, Quattro, 745, etc. So they were really aimed at the high end market. Today we're gonna to look at what's considered the flagship of the ADS line back in the late 80s the PQ-20. PQ-20 was a four channel amplifier rated 80 watts by four or 200 by two. Let's take a look at the Audio Magazine 1988 Car Stereo Buyer's Guide. You can see the PQ-20, $770 retail back then. Quite a bit of money. So I decided what I wanted to do is kind of compare it to today's money. So I went to an inflation calculator and show you, yes, 1600 and $41 in 2017 money. That's big money, friends. Also, there must have been some confusion between the marketing department and the technical department at ADS. You can see here, this literature shows four by 80 or two by 200 for variations of such for the rating, but yet the owner's manual shows four by 70 or two by 150. So I'm not really sure what was going on there. It's just very interesting to see the difference. The exterior of the ADS PQ20 utilizes a gray powder coating finish. And it's a very simple design, yet very elegant. You know, at the time, manufacturers used different heat sinks, and this one definitely stood out. Just the looks of this amplifier screamed high end, as it should, as we've seen by the price, how much it cost. You really had to have deep pockets to own one of these back in the day. Also, the way all the connections happen on one side helped for a really clean install. Let's take a look at the inputs and outputs. You'll notice the dual ground and dual plus 12 volt inputs. Also a remote insert there and dual 30 amp fuses. And also all the channels individually had their own insert terminals and the bridge shows you how to hook it up so you could bridge each channel. There's also a switch that you had to switch for bridging and used RCA's one and three when you wanted to do the bridge, but you had to switch it to the right to the little yellow dot there. Also on the far right was an eight pin DIN connector for external accessories such as the 642 CSI crossover, since there were no crossovers built into the amplifier itself. Now the dimensions of the amplifier, 14.25 inches or 860 millimeters long by 8.25 or 210 millimeters wide by two and three eighths or 62 millimeters high. The PQ20's biggest competitor at the time was probably the Soundstream MC300. They're both rated very similar and you can see the dimensions nearly identical. The one thing you will notice different here is look at how small the inputs are on the PQ20. They're 12 gauge, whereas the MC300 will accept eight gauge. As with Soundstream, the ADS amplifiers having the insert terminals and very clean connections to the external crossovers, just made for really nice looking installs. And they kind of market it this way for the higher end. You can see how clean these installs are. And this is from a convertible BMW. And uh, yeah, just looks really nice. So they um, definitely aimed at the higher end market at the time. There's only four screws holding the bottom plate on. We'll take these four screws out and pry the bottom off and let's take a look at the guts. Notice this nice little piece of hard paper in between the bottom plate and the amplifier. That's interesting. Here you can notice the amplifier kind of split in two sections. The input section with the pulse width modulation and the other section on the right for the outputs has all the capacitors and all the filtering and everything as well as the transistors. 
Speaking of capacitors, here you can see the six 50 volt 2200 microfarad capacitors here. And yes, these are the originals and they're not leaking yet, so good deal there. Here's a Toshiba 2SC3281 transistor. Even found a little build sheet here that talks about all the different uh, components used. You can see the cost of the transistors and such there. The PQ20 was featured in part two of the Big Amp test by Car Stereo Review. This one was January, February 1989. PQ20 and the Soundstream NC500 were the only four channel amps in this particular test. You can see the results here. They got 168 watts times two at four ohms and 83 watts times four at four ohms. So we'll see how we compare to that. As I mentioned before, the amp has 12 gauge inputs for the speakers as well as the power and ground. So we had to use these distribution blocks so that we could uh, take very short runs of 12 gauge power and ground and hopefully get enough juice to run this amp on the dyno. We also hooked in a nice little toggle switch here for our remote turn on, just makes it easier to connect and disconnect the amplifier and we're ready to turn it off and on. And first what we did is we hooked it up bridged mono so each channel was hooked in to the bridge mono section of the amp and then both of the switches were switched to the right and we hooked up RCAs one and three, which are the two for the bridging of the channels. The input level adjustments for each front and rear channel are here on the top. You can see there between the heatsink fins, you have to use a really small screwdriver to adjust those. All right, it's amp dyno time. So first off, we have the amp hooked up with both channels bridged. And we're gonna try it at one kilohertz, four ohms. It's rated 200 by two. And yes, we got that. 213, 205, 14.13. And we pulled 62.3 amps, 47.5% efficiency. Remember, this is a class AB amp. Four ohms bridged 40 hertz, just for comparison. We got right at 200 watts. We're a little bit under 14.4, so I'm sure we would have gotten over 200 if we had 14.4 volts. Again, efficiency is low, but this is a class AB amplifier, so we don't expect it to be high. Now we tried it clipping four ohms, both channels bridged. Got just a little bit more, 217 and 208 at one kilohertz, 14.26 volts, and 46.9% efficiency. Now we'll check out the dynamic capability at one kilohertz. This simulates the IHF 202 test, 279, 269. So yeah, it's got some headroom built in for your musical peak, so that's great. So next up, I wanted to test out just each channel individually. The dyno only can test two channels, so we wanted to test channels one and two using the dyno, and then bridge channel three and four and hook that into our external resistor bank. This way we have all the channels loaded and make sure we have the switches here in the right place. So channels one and two in stereo, three and four in bridge. We'll hook up the RCAs for channels one and two. And then we really only needed to hook up channel three here, but we went ahead and hooked up the other one just for a clean look if you want to. Here's the external resistor bank. I've shown this before, made this several years ago. It's good for 400 watts times two so it'll work great loading down those other two channels so that we can get an accurate measurement for the other two. So here we'll try channels one and two, stereo, 1% THD, one kilohertz, rated 80 by four at 14.4. Yeah, we didn't quite get there. 65 watts at four ohms, 14.22, and we pulled 52.1 amps. So we didn't calculate the efficiency because we didn't know how much power was consumed by the resistor, so Again, channels one and two were hooked into the dyno, showing that here, and the rear channels, three and four, were bridged, and those are going into the resistor bank into a four ohm load. All right, next up, we want to try two ohms. Again, this is the front channels loaded at two ohms. Rear channels are on the resistor bank uh, at four ohms, so it's rated 100 by four, and we got 104 at a little less than 14.4 volts, so very nice. It did its rated power here. Hold 65.6 amps. Again, we can't calculate efficiency. 
All right, on to the results. I know you guys just saw the dyno test, but sometimes you want to see it right here in front of your face. So at one kilohertz, we got 213, 205, 4 ohm certified, 217, 208 uncertified, 279, 269 at dynamic. And with the individual channel test, we got 65 times two at four ohm certified and 104 times two at two ohm certified. All right, guys, there you have the test of the ADS analog and digital systems PQ20 sound quality master amplifier from back in the day, 30 years old, did pretty good. Appreciate you guys always is watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Until next time, I'm out of here. Sure, I got one question for you. It's can you deal with that?